Information systems are vulnerable to various dangers which may result in an organization financial losses or even destruction of the entire information system. There are two major categories of these threats, namely unintentional and deliberate threats. Let's start talking about the unintentional threats. These are acts performed without malicious intent but cause serious losses or damages to information systems. Typically, these threats are caused by employees. These are the usual reasons why that is. Higher level employees typically have the access to a wide collection of data across the organization. Human resources employees generally have access to sensitive personal information about all employees. Information system employees not only have access to sensitive organizational data, but they often control the means to create, store, transmit, and modify that data. Other employees that may be overlooked in the information security arrangements are temporary hires and consultants. These people may have been given access to the company's network, information systems, and information assets. Janitors and guards are the most frequently ignored people in information security systems. Companies frequently outsource their security and janitorial services. They are usually present when other employees have gone home, they typically have keys to every office, and they can be found even in the most sensitive parts of the building. Human errors or mistakes by employees pose a large problem. These errors may be the result of negligence, inattention, or lack of awareness. The lack of awareness comes from poor education and training efforts by the organization. Here are some common human errors. Misplacing company-provided devices, using them carelessly to the point that malware is introduced, opening emails from someone unknown, or clicking on suspicious links embedded in emails. Accessing questionable websites that can result in malware being introduced into the organization's network. Using weak passwords, forgetting to lock desks and filing cabinets, and not logging off the company network. Discarding old computer hardware and other digital devices without completely wiping the stored files. Carelessness using unmanaged devices. Unmanaged devices are those outside of control of an organization's IT department and company security procedures. These devices include computers belonging to customers and business partners. Careless monitoring of environmental hazards. These hazards, which include dirt, dust, humidity, and static electricity, are harmful to the operation of computing equipment. Neglecting software bugs that occur during the programming of a computer system and the use of improper settings when software is installed. Employees are also vulnerable to social engineering. Social engineering is an attack in which the perpetrator uses social skills to trick or manipulate legitimate employees into providing confidential company information. These are common techniques of perpetrators for social engineering. First, the attacker impersonates someone else on the telephone, such as a company manager or an information systems employee. Second, the attacker claims he forgot his password and asks the legitimate employee to give him a password to use. Third, the attacker pretends to be an exterminator, an air conditioning technician, or a fire marshal to access the organization's restricted areas. Here are additional techniques that they use. Tailgating. It is a technique designed to allow the perpetrator to enter restricted areas that are controlled with locks or card entry. The perpetrator follows closely behind a legitimate employee, and when the employee gains entry, the attacker asks him to hold the door. Shoulder surfing. It occurs when a perpetrator watches an employee's computer screen over the employee's shoulder. The technique is particularly successful in public areas such as airports and train stations. At this point, let's talk about the second major classification of threats against information systems, which are the deliberate threats. These threats are acts that are purposely performed to cause harm or destruction. Here's a list of common examples of intentional threats. Espionage. It happens when a spy or unauthorized individual attempts to gain illegal access to organizational information, such as their plans and activities, upon the order of a competitor. Information extortion. It occurs when an attacker steals information from a company and demands payment to return or to not disclose the information. This often takes the form of ransomware and distributed denial of service attacks, both of which could paralyze the organization. 
Ransomware involves a hacker tricking one of the employees into clicking on a link or file with an email message. This activates the ransomware, which spreads throughout the network, encrypting the servers and data so employees can access applications and files. Distributed denial of service, or DDoS attacks, involve hackers using a network of infected computers to send an overwhelming flood of messages to the web server, which effectively takes it out of service until the messaging stops. Cyber vandalism. It is an act of corrupting someone else's data into something embarrassing or invasive content, in such a way that it sabotages the victim's brand and reputation. Cyber vandals may deface a website to impact the ability of the customers to access services and create malware that damages electronic files or elements that interrupt its normal utilization. Theft of equipment. Computing devices are becoming smaller yet more powerful with vastly increased storage. As a result, these devices are becoming easier to steal and easier for attackers to use to steal information. The cost of loss of electronic devices includes loss of data, loss of intellectual property, and lost productivity. Identity theft. Attackers infiltrate organizations to steal personal information in computer databases. They also steal information through dumpster diving. Dumpster diving involves the practice of rummaging through commercial or residential trash to find information that has been discarded. They also do phishing attacks which is the use of deception to acquire sensitive personal information by masquerading as official-looking emails or instant messages. The perpetrators then use personal identifying information like their name, identifying number, or credit card number to commit fraud or other crimes. This illegal activity is called identity theft. Malicious software attacks. Attackers use malicious software to infect as many computers worldwide and use sophisticated techniques to attack the web-based systems of organizations to make money. These attacks are grouped into three categories. Remote attacks requiring user action, remote attacks requiring no user action, and software attacks by programmers during the development of a system. Virus and worm are examples of remote attacks requiring user action. A virus is described as a segment of computer code that performs malicious actions by attaching it to another computer program. A worm is defined as a segment of computer code that performs malicious actions and will replicate or spread by itself without requiring another computer program. Denial of service attack and distributed denial of service attack are categorized as remote attacks needing no user action. In a denial of service attack, an attacker sends so many information requests to target computer system that the target cannot handle them successfully and typically crashes or ceases to function. In a distributed denial of service attack, an attacker first takes over many computers, then these computers are called zombies or bots, which form a botnet to deliver a coordinated stream of information requests to a target computer, causing it to crash. Backdoor and logic bomb are classified as attacks by a programmer developing a system. A backdoor, also called a trapdoor, is typically a password known only to the attacker that allows him or her to access a computer system at will without having to go through any security procedures. A logic bomb is a segment of computer code that is embedded within an organization's existing computer programs and is designed to activate and perform a destructive action at a certain time or date. Alien software. Without your knowledge, it might have been installed too when you had installed another software. This hidden software is called alien software. It uses resources in your system and might also report your web surfing habits and other behavior to perpetrators. Adware, spyware, and spamware are examples of this. Adware is software that can cause unwanted pop-up advertisements to appear on the screen. Spyware, such as keystroke loggers and screen scrapers, are software that collects personal information about users. Spamware enables attackers to search, sort, and compile a list of email addresses and provides an automated email broadcasting solution. It can be used to send spam or unsolicited emails to unsuspecting recipients. Cyber terrorism and cyber warfare are sometimes treated as synonyms. 
even though cyber terrorism typically is carried out by individuals or groups, whereas cyber warfare is carried out by nation states. Both terms refer to malicious actions performed by the attacker to use a computer system via the internet to cause physical disorders, real-world harm, or severe disruption, usually to carry out a political agenda. They usually target the critical infrastructure of SCADA systems. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. SCADA systems are used in many different industries such as water management and water treatment, oil and gas facilities, and manufacturing sites. They are used to gather, monitor, and process real-time data as well as to control processes and devices such as sensors, valves, pumps, and motors locally or at the remote locations through a human-machine interface which makes them a target to malicious hackers. We come to the end of this video lesson. I hope I have given some light to your knowledge about the threats to information systems. If you find this helpful, please like, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for your time.